Hello, this video is for Smalley's Math 2415 Calculus 3 course for the Summer 2 session of 2017. And the purpose of this video is to give you a little walk through uh, our D2L system and sort of see how the course is going to work. And, and overall, I found making these videos make it easier for students to sort of navigate their way, especially you could be new to Lone Star, new to online, all kinds of stuff. So hopefully this will help clarify you know, some of your questions. All right, now um, go to uh, LoneStar.edu, which is what I've done is a home page here for Lone Star. Now there's uh, two ways you can get into the course, either through my Lone Star, which actually brings up a page where you can access other features of, of your uh, Lone Star account, and my email pops up whenever I go to that, that page also. Or if you just don't want to, you know, navigate your way through, you know, my Lone Star for its other features, you can go straight to the LSC online right up here at the top. Click on that. And class login. All right. I see the secure login. Or this alternate login. If you're having any difficulties, you know, before you call the check with the service people, sometimes trying this alternate login can work. I'll try this secure login. If it doesn't work, I'll go vote. Oh, all right. Well, it didn't like that, did it? So maybe it does have to be the alternate login. All right. There we go. So it automatically popped up. Right, since I had it saved. Okay. We're in. Looks a little bit different. So obviously to get to this, you would have completed that uh, preliminary little orientation thing you have to do to get access to D2L. Now it's going to look a lot different for you. I'll kind of change back and forth, but I'll show you. Uh, obviously you're not going to have all those courses over there. Um, role, student role. So I can change and see what it looks like from your perspective. Um, don't know why that didn't change. Let me go back to the home page here. I don't know why that didn't go into student mode. Well, all right, I'll, I'll go back. I'll bring up the courses. Oh, I know. I think I have to bring up the actual course itself. Yes, that's what it was. Student, change role. So you should should look something like this for you. The main things you're looking at here uh, that you have to deal with are content, grades, assessments, and we'll talk about that. Now I may switch out of this um, mode. Now, of course, this calendar is very important here. This calendar shows the due dates for all the quizzes and when the uh, exams will end and that sort of thing. Now, one question I'll get, you know, maybe from every once in a while is, you know, these deadline dates for like exams and stuff. Uh, every once in a while, someone will ask me, you know, like for exam deadlines, that mean you only do it that day. No, that's 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 means that's the last day you can do it. So I've got these exams set up. Now I've not sent the information to the Lone Star Testing Centers, which I'll do that in the next couple of days. Um, but anyway, so theoretically once that information sent, you know, if you felt like you could take finish this class in two weeks, you could if you wanted to. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that, of course, but, but theoretically, you can work ahead. In other words, you don't have to wait until the deadline day to take the test. So that's just the last day to take it. Any day before it, like I said, except for the this course opens on Thursday the 13th. I don't plan on anything until next week. Yes, all right. So that's, let me get back out of that. So hopefully someone will listen to this video and not ask me that question. So you see the calendar shows all these due dates, very important, so you can make a list of those. 
Now, so you didn't you didn't have this edit course, obviously. So now I'm back in instructor mode. Uh, that's all right. Content. Let's see what's going on in here. Let's take a peek at the syllabus. Let's start with that. See, so I have, I have a they call them modules. Technically, is the term for them, but I call them folders. Same thing. Who cares? Um, syllabus, textbook, and other items. That's sort of like my sort of dumping ground for a variety of stuff, important stuff that doesn't need its own separate module. So I'm going to open this syllabus. And we'll scroll down here and show you something because uh, in case like some of the notes, um, as I'd recorded the landscape, I hadn't changed a lot of them, maybe some of them yet. But anyway, long story short, if they come out looking sideways, come down here to where it says download, and that's what I'm going to do with this file, and, and it will download the file as a PDF, and then once it's in PDF, you can easily rotate it around. I'm going to sort of click it. There we go. You see it's down here in the bottom left corner, like that. So anything that looks sideways, just download it as a PDF, and then you should have a, you know, rotate clockwise or counterclockwise to get it looking the way you want to. Now, one thing I'll say here, and I'll also say this in a, in a written announcement, um, are called news items in D2L, is that this syllabus has changed a little bit on the percentages of the grading. So uh, I posted a syllabus about three days ago in my Lone Star, viewable to the public, and I've changed it yesterday. So if you looked at the one that was two or three days ago, that's not quite the same. It's very close, but it's not quite the same. So if you have another syllabus, get rid of it, you know, I, I, if you printed it, get rid of it, or if you didn't, whatever, but this is the one that now matches what I put in my Lone Star. So the other one's a little bit obsolete, but it's not, it wasn't major changes. All right, you can read all this, Cal3, blah, blah, blah. You can email me through D2 mail, D2 email. In other words, if you're in D2 it, did working in D2L, you can email me from there or email address lonestar.edu. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, especially with this being such a short course, is if some some things go on my spam folder, so that could delay you maybe a while, a few hours up to a day before I actually get the message. Uh, sometimes from other EDUs, will go into spam. Uh, I've had yahoo.com go into spam. So, but, uh, but that's not a big deal. So that's when you keep that in mind that it might go to my spam folder. But if you're in D2A, uh, D2L and you're working, email me from there, then there's absolutely no doubt I'll, I'll get it without being spam. All right, yada, 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 catalog description, student learning outcomes. Okay. No point in going through through that. Course materials. Uh, you can use like a scientific or graphing calculator, but not one that has algebraic features such as TI-89. I'm not sure if a TI-92 is even a thing anymore. But a TI-Inspire CAS. If you have a TI-Inspire CX, that's okay. Or that new TI-CE, that's okay. But mainly the, the ones that have algebraic capabilities. I don't care if, you know, you can use numerical integration. It's fine. Uh, but not algebraic. Okay, I often get asked about my math lab. We're not requiring my math lab for this course. And I mentioned here, if you've used my math lab in the past, if it's a book, if it's do they still, that Pearson still supports, and you send me the information, but they don't support the book anymore. That's not true, but it won't be true. But I could set up like a blank course, you know, where I don't put anything in it other than just to open up something where you could get in it and if you want to access videos and things like that. So just let me know. I have a, uh, a PDF of, a, of Larson's, an old edition of Larson's ninth textbook. Now, since there are no assignments here that are tied to a particular book or software, other than being in D2L, which we all have access to that. So you can, you know, that Larson one, just my notes will just follow along with the Larson, but if you've got another calculus textbook that you like and you like use Cal 1 and Cal 2, and feel free to stay with it. That's that's fine. I'm sure you can, uh, you know, match up my notes to whatever section it is in your book. That's fine. 
Uh, okay, Khan Academy is a good site for videos and stuff, and I'll talk more about that. Uh, videos in general here shortly. Homework, I have a practice list. Um, in a short term, I can understand how it would be hard to find time to do most of those, but it's there, not required. Now, what? Uh, so what we can do is... Uh, is take these what's called these quizzes now I'll show you these in a minute uh, there are eight take-home quizzes there I, I always debate between whether to change the name from quizzes to like homework set maybe I don't know it's not that big a deal but they're quizzes in the sense that they're not live action quizzes meaning you have access to the problems in advance and then you just go into B2L and submit your answer so you could certainly argue that the name of them are more like homework sets so we uh, have eight of those. Three will be drops. And the best five forms a quiz grade, which is what this says by quiz average right here. So uh, technically, you'll have the questions in advance. So when you go into D2L, all you have to do is submit your answers. Now I mentioned here, be careful when you're ending your answers. Sometimes D2L scrambles the answer choices, but it can't it can't change the values. The values wouldn't change, but if uh, you know you're working a quiz problem and you know the answer is 2 pi and if it was A on the PDF file and it's D on the quiz you still pick 2 pi so just pick the right numerical value or algebraic answer now also to sort of save time a little bit and keep things moving um, exam 1 is going to be take home I was thinking about making it a live action test but I'm, I decided not so you will also have this file in advance where you'll be able to work the problems and you'll just go into D2L to submit your answers. And But exam two, exam three, and the final exam, oh, well, okay, I need to change this. Taken in class, obviously that's not for, that's not for a face to, that's, yeah, that's not for online. Uh, that should say Proctored Testing Center. And you will not have the questions in advance for those. That will be a live action exam right there. And I'll talk more about that here. It's okay, so that's a little typo there. I forgot to fix the wording on that. Um, now here's here's what we're going to do. The exam one or the quiz average. I'll take the greater of those two. And that'll be 30% of your grade. Now... One thing I would recommend, let's say you do make 100 on the quiz one, I would strongly recommend trying to do those other quizzes strictly for practice, you know, because you'll be taking, you know, live exams in a testing center. So I, I think it would be good practice. So even if, if you, even if you don't need the grade because you already have a 100 or 96 or whatever you like from exam one, I would consider still trying to do the quizzes. Of course, then, you know, you're under less pressure. Um, to get a good score on them, but so you still want to try to do them the best you can, so do some of them, and then that way you will try to submit your quiz in a timely manner so you can then go back and look at it later and see what you missed, that sort of thing. Now, exam two or exam three, I'll drop the lowest of those two. So you could choose not to take one if you didn't want to. And then the final exam is mandatory. So you see that adds to the greater of those two will be 35%. The final is automatically 35%, and you see that adds up to 100%. Pretty standard looking grading scale there. There's no extra credit for this course. You know, you can't, you know, wash my car or clean my house for extra points or anything like that. Um, I do, uh, for, the, for the exam two, exam three, and final exam, we'll talk about that later, but I do adjust the score because they're multiple choice. So I do adjust the scores a little bit, so they're taking uh, no exception where that is if I if I it's not automatic, but if I gave an extension for something I thought was a re reason, I you, you would you would only get your percentage score, but if you take it on time, you get the adjusted formula score, which is for everybody. I guess it's sort of like factoring in partial credit, but I'm not looking at the exams at all. I'm just taking the grade. All right, I'm not going to read all this because actually I'm sort of talking this. I made this up a while back whenever I 
before I started making these videos. So I'm going to you know, see where it says proctored exams right there, exams two, two, three, and the final are proctored exams. And I'll mention that um, they're going to automatically be sent to all Lone Star College testing centers. Because sometimes someone will ask me, you know, they know I'm based at, you know, University Park. Do I have to come there to take the exam? Absolutely not. If you're close to Montgomery or close to Kingwood or close to Cy Fair or any of the, the centers, you know, the Cypress Center and the Tomball, and all, yeah, so any of the Cy uh, main campuses and the, and the satellite campuses will receive the exam. Uh, no appointments necessary, but you would need to verify their hours. You want to make sure you get there in enough time to give yourself enough time on the day that you're going to go. But appointments not required, but you still make sure you plan ahead and verify the hours they're open. If you're using outside testing centers, you want to contact me as quickly as possible. I realize that exam one is going to be take home, but this is such a fast moving class. Do not wait till we get near exam two, because if you wait too late, I'll say no for that exam because I'm not going to, you can't email me the day before exam two deadline with an outside testing center and expect me to set it up for you. So please get with me as quickly as possible. Um, just to give you an example. I'm work. Uh, I have a Cal 2 online going on right now that started a couple weeks ago and I'm using Sam Houston State. I'm using Austin Community College. Uh, both of them, they might be the only two. I'm not sure if I'm using anyone else, but uh, so, but so you got to contact me and give me that info so we can get you set up. Now, one thing I will say is, you once I set you up at a testing center and and, and you decide you want to go to a Lone Star testing center, you can just do that. You know, you don't have to um, tell me about it or anything, but. But one thing to keep in mind about if you're using the outside testing center, that's an issue I've been dealing with with the Austin Community College and whatever. And same thing with Sam Houston is I believe they require appointments. So you have to set up a time. So don't, you know, even if I send them the information, I don't think you can just come drifting in there whenever you feel like it. So like you can for Lone Star. Keep that in mind. Okay, a bunch of mess here we don't care about, but that'll be there bunch of mumbo jumbo there so let's go back and see what's going on here so there's your syllabus I'll go back here and here's uh, here's the uh, the textbook PDF file for the Larson or like I said use anything you want uh, some practice problems I'll just bring this up for a minute to show you something actually the, the lecture notes will will show you the same thing I'm not going to open this up. So the, the lecture notes would give you the same each folder. It's organized, but this this shows you see how the, the the gray bars separate the content for what's going to be on each section. We actually have a few more sections in chapter 15 now, but not much. So I didn't even assign homework for those. Uh, you can just look at the notes and use that to answer the quiz questions. I think and you'll be fine. But anyway, yeah, so that at least you can see exam one, exam two, exam three, what they cover. All right, so this Cal 3 formulas, and I'll, when I want to send out the exams, I'll, I'll announce this in a news item. This will be the last video I actually make as far as, you know, telling you stuff. Everything else will be written news items. This formula sheet will be sent to the testing centers and given to you for every exam. Obviously, you won't. Uh, for the first exam, you just look at it and use it online, and obviously you won't need all these for every exam. You'll get those automatically. And I'll probably, even though you may not need this one, it won't hurt for me to go ahead and send it, but there's a trig sheet for uh, unit circle stuff and trig identities and things. I don't know how much that comes up. It won't be a lot, but I don't mind attaching that. Now, it doesn't have uh, things like trig derivatives and stuff like that. So, obviously, you need to know the derivative of sine and cosine and all that kind of stuff. So, but at least you know with these two sheets what you're going to be given, and you kind of need to know what you're not going to have, what won't be given. Uh, problem list for the final exam, I might tweak this a little bit. So, I'm going to delete this. I don't do this for every exam, but I do it for the final 
just to help consolidate your study efforts a little bit. Shows you, well, I'm going to bring this up right now, but I'm not, I think I'm going to go ahead and delete it and redo another one. But just so you at least see what this is, a couple things I may tweet. But, uh, but I'm going to give you this back again, so don't worry. But I mean, but it describes the type of problem and also what section it's coming from, too. Like I said, just to help trim down your study so you don't have to worry about, you know, because it's, it's uh, I do that in the long semesters too also, but especially I think that's really helpful for such a short term like this, you know, to be able to do that. Um, let me go ahead and get rid of this right now. Look at it again. And I'll bring it back, like I said. I may change one thing on the final. Um, all right. Example of quiz two data, you know, this PDF file, you can open this up and I'll go back to the quizzes here in just a minute, but it kind of shows you what to do. I could come back to this, I guess, but Oh, here I'm showing a problem. Okay, this is uh And then you see um, this one didn't, looks like this one didn't scramble the answers, but so you see on the PDF file, you see where I have the arrow right there, the D2L format. It doesn't use A, B, C, D, it just uses little radio buttons there. So obviously, you know, you just click on the, punch the right one there, and then when you're done, you just submit your answers. Uh, now the, uh, Reviewing your quizzes and uh, exams, uh, if I forget to set one up, just send me an email and remind me. But, but what I generally do for the quizzes, uh, quizzes, I make them available. I know that can be frustrating for people that are working ahead, but I make them available generally like right about an hour after the, the deadline for the quiz. So if you submit it early, I know it can be frustrating and you see you made a 90 and you're dying to know which one you missed, you'll need to wait until the you is ready for everybody so the reason I did that is you know if people exchange ideas with each other that's fine before, but I don't want to just if one person does it I don't want to just provide the answer key for everybody else but obviously if you work together with someone and make hundreds that's fine but I would just prefer not to give the answer key out in advance so you'll have to wait on that but this is kind of tricky here I'll show you this file you can go back and look at it again but it's uh you know, when I go to the, when I go to the quizzes, maybe I should have done that first. But they're all they're like blue, looking like this in D2L. And you'll actually click on the quiz itself when you're going to enter your answers. But so suppose it's after the deadline, you want to go back. So you made a 90. What did I miss? It would it, it'd be real tempted to go back and click on that world history quiz, like right there, and click on that again. But that doesn't work. That's only for submitting your quizzes. You have to click this drop down arrow, choose submissions. And then you click on that attempt right there. So that's uh, that's how you actually view your results. But you can't view result your results, as I said, until about an hour after the deadline. All right, a bunch of other blah blah testing center. Uh, I might need to. That's a web link. Let me get. Uh, okay, I can just update that and replace it because that's probably for an invalid semester. Well, I don't know. Let me see what it is. Uh, okay, this is fine. So it's just a web page that's updated. So, but I would still call and check. So you see, so this shows all the hours of all the LSC centers and everything. So you can give them a, that's a link for you. you can give them a call. There you go. Okay, so that's fine. It wasn't for a previous semester. Perfect. Testing Center, Khan Academy link, uh, Calc Chat Solutions for the Larson book. If you're doing any of those practice problems, it's uh, it's for the odds only. Click on those. You pick what book you want. One probably just kind of at least shows you some of the steps. It's better than looking at just the answer in the back. It gives you more information. All right, let's come over here. Lecture notes and videos. Hope to be updating these videos, but I need. It's going to be tough. I'll try to do some for you, but I've got to, I know Cal too. I need to do a bunch for them too. So, okay, everything's nice and organized over here, grouped. You know, everything. I think you can tell. 
Exam 1 notes. Okay, there's everything that relates to Exam 1. That's pretty simple. But come over here, click on something you want. Let's see. Lines and planes and space. We open that up. And there you go. Okay, that one wasn't sideways. But like I said, to get more screen, I would just get the whole file to come out. I would do this thing I showed you earlier about the download instead of, I mean, you can view it, you can, that window if you want, right there, that's fine, but I would personally just go ahead and make it a whole page thing, so. See how easy that is? Click on that, go through notes, and so you see everything's grouped. Here's the, the files for exam two. Exam three. There they are. And this last section, this is just, it's not, it's some stuff, and we'll talk more about that, that will be on the final and, and a couple of the quizzes, but not on its own exam. So there's, however many questions come from this chapter will only be on the, not that many, four or five, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, five or some, maybe. A anyway, that's on the final, so there's not a separate exam for chapter 15 from the Larson book, but there are a couple of quizzes that relate to it. So let's see what's in my lecture videos. These might be old. So let's see what's in here. Um, oh, these are videos that were done by a friend of mine using an older software thing. I don't know how well they even work and if they'll open up or not. I can't promise anything. I need to kind of, uh, from a good friend of mine named Rachel Smith. So I don't know if this, I'll just click on one of these and see what happens. It's using an old system we don't support anymore. Yeah, I know you have to enable this silver light to make it work. So, um, well, I can't promise much there. So enable, you'll, but if it tells you to enable silver, silver light, do that. I, I don't, uh, one of these deals I don't personally support. I mean, I'm in mean, support in the sense from a technical standpoint. I don't support it, in the, you know, as far as making it work. You know, if you say I can't get that video to work, I'm I'm very sorry. Now, like I said, I've got. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of some of these. These are these are old. I need to get rid of these. I'll do that a little later. Uh, I have some old Cal one and Cal two notes that you certainly can keep, print, give to friends, use as anything you need as a reference. I even have old pre-cal notes in there, so that's strictly for your entertainment. I'm going to get rid of these other two journal things. I'm getting rid of those. We don't need those. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Some important stuff down here. So like I said, the quiz is exam one. Here, So here's exam one. Uh, how many problems are here? 20 or 25? You go through, you take these, you work them. 25. You work all these out, you know, before the deadline. And let me show you the quizzes while I'm here, too. Same kind of idea. Any quiz, click it open, see what's happening. I think the quizzes all talk about what section they come from. If they're, I'll look through there. If I forget to look through there, um, and there's not one that shows tells you the section, I'm not worried about changing it on the D2L page. But if you don't see the sections, then just send me a message and I, I'll fix that up for you. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go through probably and change them right here on this page. Just you can click on it and you can see. So there they are, quiz one, two, six, seven, and eight. So there, every one of them is consistent. There's ten problems. I'll click on one here, random quiz six. All right, and you see there's every one of them have ten. So you pick your answers. Okay, this is going to be a fun chapter. If you thought one integral was fun, you're going to love two or three. The more the merrier, right? So let's see. So you do them. It tells you what sections. Yeah, this this sometimes these, this one takes long. I only use one quiz for this chapter because it looks a little lengthier. Um, 
Perfect. So you do those. Now let's come over here. Yeah, grades will just be where you look at your grades. Every, uh, now, of course, the, the quizzes will be in there automatically, exam one. Now, for exam two and exam three, it, it'll put the grade in there, but I'll go back through there and I'll adjust it based on the formula. I'll let you know what that formula is going to be. But I have to manually adjust that, but everything goes. So it's pretty neat going here, and that way you can kind of keep track of your grades. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind is uh, it, it, because it's programmed, to, to drop three quizzes, it kind of, don't be paranoid here, it's going to show until you take, it's going to drop the first three quizzes you take, no matter what, but not really drop in theory. So it's just because it's going to drop like this one, it's going to drop the first three, but, that's, but it'll work itself out at the end, don't worry about that. So let's say you make 90, 90, 90, it's going to think those are dropped, but then as soon as you take the next one and make 100, it'll drop one of those 90s. So it always keeps a running drop of three. So, but it's it's fine. Nothing to be nothing to panic about. It's gonna work itself out beautifully at the end. It just keeps it. It doesn't wait till you do all eight to drop three. It just drops three immediately. All right. So here's what okay. I got everything. I believe it's in chronological order. Exam two, exam three, and the final exam have these little padlocks on there because they are password protected. The other ones are not. Okay, but let me say this real clearly here. Sometimes I put a password and tell the students what it is for these other ones just so they don't, don't open it by mistake. But let me clarify. Do not, do not, well, I'm about to do this now to show you, but do not open a quiz until you've already completed the problems on the PDF file and you are ready to submit all your answers. You need to submit them all at once. Like It's not like a My Math Lab homework where you go do a few and come back and do a few later. Submit the entire quiz all in one sitting, which is going to take you about five minutes to do it. It's not going to I think I allow like 60 minutes, but... I mean, unless you go super, super slow, just to be careful, which isn't a bad idea, it might take you 10 minutes. I don't want really to take that long. But uh, you just because you're just going through there and you're marking your answers is all you're doing. Because you would have already done the problems. But do not open this until you're ready to submit all of your answers. Same thing goes for exam one also. So we click on one of these. Here's quiz one. You would have done the problems. Uh, does it, let me, well... You won't see it like this. You're going to see a button that says, well, okay, let me go back and I'll go back to student view here. Start quiz. See there, it's just showing me the list of the problems and where they came from. Student. All right, there's my big, big green button. Quizzes. Quiz one. See, there's all my due dates. I have everything ending at 10 p.m. Um, I'm sure you would have figured this out. I'll mention it anyway. Oh, the, the deadline time, let me clarify that for this, you know, different softwares might work different way, different ways. But this means you just have to open it by 10. You know, you don't have to be finished by 10. So if you open a quiz by 10 p.m., you'll still have the 60 minutes or whatever to enter your answers. Just get in there before the deadline. Now, the exams, all these all say 10 p.m., but that's not really true. None of the testing centers will be, will be open that late. I just made it the deadline be beyond the closing time of the testing centers. So here's quiz one. Start quiz. Okay. Load it up. And let's see what happens here. All right. I'm not sure if you have to save each question as you do it. Oh, I could try to do this one in my head real quick. See if I get it right. Uh, let's see. 4, negative 32, minus 9, would be negative 41 over 5. Okay, I don't have to even do the second part. It's got to be that answer. So I'll save it. And I'll go through here. Save all response. Okay, yeah, you can save all the responses. It'll probably give me some message about 
you have blank answers, blah, blah, blah. So you want to, yeah, look, that's all right. Yeah, submit. And, well, obviously you won't see this immediately when I change the dates here, but uh, uh, that's not going to pop up. That, you won't be able to see this till after that deadline, but it's, I haven't changed that yet. So, well, okay, looks gave me a check mark, so I got that one right, and obviously I missed every other one, so I made a fantastic 10 on that quiz. So, all right, that was good enough just for demonstration. But like I said, you go in there after you have worked them all out. I think you'll be fine there. So change role. And so there's the assessment. I say, oh, that's the only thing we need here. There's no Dropbox or, or any other mess, like for English or something like that. But So there we go. But the exams, uh, not well, exam two, exam three, exam uh, final, you will go to the testing center, uh, make sure they uh, I'll tell them, you, you be sure to ask if they don't give you those formula sheets I talked about earlier. Make sure they give you those. And they're supposed to give you scratch paper, and you can write on the formula sheets too. That's fine. But uh, you'll turn that in, though, when you leave. Um, and so you will have scratch paper, even though it's a multiple choice online quiz. Uh, and then when you don't, they, then they enter the password for you to actually unlock the exam, and then they'll start. And I'm always pretty generous on my time links. I always make them real long, like four. I may even make them unlimited, but uh, the, the, the quiz, exam two and exam three are going to be 20 questions. The final, I believe, is 25. But I always make them four hours, five hours, something like that. I've never had anyone, oh, somebody submitted a quiz. That was me, wasn't it? Let me go delete it. Go in here. Obviously, you won't be doing any of this. Hey, there I am. I made a 10%. Well, you know what? Because I'm the instructor, I can say, I don't like that attempt. I can get rid of it. <laughs> hey, okay. I'm not doing that for you. There we go. I was able to wipe myself out there. So, all right, let's get that out of there. So, yeah, you won't be dealing with any of that, any of that business yourself. But. So, yeah, but make sure they give you the stuff you need for each test. Uh, where was it? Okay, I think I covered that. So, like I was talking about, this is that, well, you won't see this now, but after you complete a quiz, you'll see that submission thing after the deadline. And All right. Now, back to the home page. Um, faculty, let's see, where was I? We talked about the only thing there, assessment for the quizzes. Content, anything else? Oh, yeah, there's a couple more things here. Okay, I do have some of my own videos. Yeah, I know, I said I need to add more, I realize that. The beginning of the course isn't too bad, actually, but I, I, I've done some videos, what I think is probably the most challenging part of the course is the multiple integrals. So at least I have videos. Now, these videos are YouTube. So there won't be any issues like um, Professor Smith's videos may have issues. Like I said, this should have no issues as long as you can get YouTube running. Like this is going to be on YouTube, this video. So, so okay, if I can add more, and, and I'll make an announcement anytime I add a video. Just, yeah, I'll say, hey, I've got a new video there. Just so I don't expect you to go in there and looking at that all the time. Now, this is an important page. We've got uh, I thought wait a minute. Oh yeah, okay, I've got a separate okay. I thought I had some videos there. Maybe I'll let me look around and see. I thought I had videos for these. Maybe I'm confusing this with another class. For these sampled exams, maybe I don't. Maybe that's something I can work on. But I have a separate folder here for it, so I must not. Then, but anyway, the important thing is PDF files. So, well, you know, you obviously you can, you know, who knows? Some of my exam questions might be similar to the ones off this review, so that's that's on me. So you can look through there and see what you can find. But here's uh, here we have this sample problems for exam two. 
So there they are. So obviously, you know, if you want to go through and practice, always a good idea. Uh, any, any time on these files, like I'll show you this problem here. Oh, oh, there it was. Where I write answer right there. That means the answer was wrong in the key at the bottom of the page here. Uh, yeah, it's weird. I can't edit on the on this software I use for that. I can't edit the answer key. So what I can, but what I can do is I can go to like I did here and go into the problem and then type in what the answer is. So it's weird. So I can't edit the key itself. So anytime you're looking at this, if I put answer right there, that that is takes over anything down at the bottom of the page. This that means that's the answer. Then I also have the worked out, my worked out solutions to these. So it's a good idea to try them. Obviously, it's you really can't just study math by just looking at what I do. You got to do it yourself, obviously. I mean, you've advanced this far in your math career, so I'm sure you know that. But so there I am doing this. So there's, you can actually look at the work. There we go. So you've got that as a resource. And I'll have to figure out this video business here. And like I said, I've got my personal videos, but I, I do online Cal 1, Cal 2, and Cal 3. So I might be confusing myself with another Cal 1. So maybe I have not done videos for these. Uh, I might do that before I do any lecture videos I'll see well let's anything else I showed you my videos down there so I believe that's going to wrap this up um, so I guess the main thing is just kind of start with the notes kind of use that in conjunction with the book I have or any book that you want to use use my notes um, to look at examples kind of work along the quizzes as you're going uh, I don't have that many videos. You could try my friend's videos, and obviously chapter 14, you want to look at my videos. Uh, Khan Academy might have some good videos if you're stuck on some things. So you kind of work along between all that. There's not really, I don't know, different, people may have different ways they prefer to do it, you know, how they study, but that's what I would kind of do, kind of go through the book. It's hard to read that entire book, but book, notes. Quizzes and then the reviews, of course, you know, when preparing for the exam. So, so I think I'll go ahead and wrap that up. I believe I covered everything. So sorry if this was a bit long-winded, but I want to make sure I got everything. And I'll be making some announcements uh, pretty soon here. And uh, let's see. So let me just show you right here. I don't have any announcements made yet, but I'll put a news item and you'll see one by the time you see this. And uh, the course actually opens up in an hour. It takes a little while for these videos to process. So if you, I'm about to make a written announcement, but if you jump in here at midnight, you actually won't see this video yet. So maybe until it's not processed. But anybody that waits till they get up on Monday, uh, Thursday sometime, then it'll be ready. All right, good luck. Don't hesitate to reach me by phone. It's probably not a good idea. But email, I'm checking email all the time. So... That's the best way to contact me. Good luck, and I usually have a pretty good success rate in, the, in these courses, surprisingly. So people that work hard usually do pretty well. No guarantees, but I wouldn't teach this course if I thought it was bad for students and they had no chance to pass. So, so good luck, and hope everything goes well.